Welcome back everyone. Following the Lakers summer league team beginning over 3, they have opted to bring in some reinforcements, one of which now being the biggest player they have on their team by far, and probably one of their better defenders too, which they definitely did need more of. And if you have no idea who I'm referring to, the Lakers picked up both 7'2 center Moses Brown, along with 4-year NBA vet Trent Forrest, adding some much needed experience to their summer league team. And well, anytime the Lakers sign or pick up a new big, you already know the fan base will be interested. And especially with Moses Brown having been on their radar before, with them having reported interest in him back in 2022 and 2023. And if he could find a way to outperform current two-way player Colin Castleton, then who knows, maybe he could find his way on their training camp roster. And if you then perform well again throughout training camp, then he might even have a shot at making their actual team. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, he does need to play well first and we'll talk about the opportunity that he has in front of him. But that's not the only thing that we have to talk about, as the Lakers have been linked to another big, with that being Wendell Carter Jr., and we'll talk about the likelihood of them being able to pull off a trade for him as well. Real quick before we get too far into it though, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell if you have been appreciating the everyday Lakers content. I know it's kinda of cliche, but it really does help out, and I really do appreciate it. But without further ado, let's dive right into it, and we'll begin by talking about the addition of their new Summer League players, starting out with Trent Forrest, and I imagine that many of you have no idea who he is. And if you're not familiar with him, Trent Forrest happens to be a 4 year NBA vet that last played for Atlanta. He is 6'4 and primarily plays at shooting guard, though he does have the ability to play some point guard if needed, and I imagine that is part of why the Lakers picked him up. I mean, if you have not been keeping up with their Summer League team, they have been really missing a reliable point guard. They have been running two combo guards up until this point, with those being Sean East and Tommy Kuse, neither of which have been reliable playmakers for them. And although Trent Forrest happens to be a combo guard as well, he is significantly more experienced compared to either of them, and legit NBA experience too, having appeared in 151 total games so far. And not only that, but he's put up about 5.8 assists per 36 minutes while doing it. Not bad at all for a combo guard. And in my opinion, he will probably get point guard minutes their very next game, as I cannot imagine that Jalen Huchifino will be ready to go. However, the unfortunate thing here is that he is no longer eligible for a two-way contract, meaning the only way the Lakers could retain him even if he plays well would be with them trimming down their 15-man roster, as they are currently completely full at 15. And well, the same thing goes for their other addition too, with that being Moses Brown. And despite him only being 24, the same age as current two-way contract Blake Henson, Brown will be entering his 5th year in the NBA, and that means he can no longer be signed with a 2-way contract. And if you're not familiar with how that all works, only an NBA player with 3 or fewer years of NBA service can be signed to a 2-way contract, and then they are limited to playing in 50 total games, along with not being eligible for the postseason. And while they are a bit limiting, 2-way contracts come in quite handy to retain young talent, which a 24-year-old would typically qualify for, but that unfortunately is not the case for Moses Brown. He is entering his fifth year in the NBA, and that comes after leaving college during his freshman year, which I imagine he regrets at this point. And much like Trent Forrest, that means he will have to earn a spot on a 15-man roster going forward, no longer being eligible to sign a two-way deal. And with that being said, what could he have to offer their team? And well, the primary thing to like about him would have to be rebounding. He is very limited on offense, along with being a bit up and down on defense, but he is a great rebounder, grabbing over 15 of them for 36 minutes. And well, that's what you should be hoping for when he gets on the court. For him to keep the ball alive on offense, along with preventing offensive rebounds on defense, which he definitely can do. But again, he does happen to be a bit sporadic on defense. There is no doubt about his ability to block shots with his 7'2 frame, but he has never quite figured out team defense, often failing to make the correct rotations, although not being able to switch on defense, and that has led to him being a distant backup so far. And if I'm being honest, I really don't see him cracking their 15-man roster. But if we're only talking about Summer League here, I am very happy about them picking him up. They have been absolutely terrible at boxing out for rebounds, and well, that is the one thing that Brown can be relied on to do. Another thing he can offer them is being a lob threat. Colin Castleton has been playing better lately, but he does not really happen to be a lob threat. And between Brown, along with Armel Traore off the bench, that should help improve their front court's athletic ability dramatically. Again, absolutely love the Lakers picking up these two for their Summer League group. They will give the team some much needed stability within both their front court and back court, though it will be very difficult for them to crack the actual 15 man roster. But hey, I guess you never know, right? And I'm rooting for them to play well. Moving on here though, we'll finish up by talking about Wendell Carter Jr., the guy that they have been linked to that I was referring to before. 
And while I talked about him being a great trade target for their team earlier this week, so you already know that I'm a fan of it as well. And yes, it does happen to be coming from a fairly reliable source, as according to Sean Devney of Heavy Sports, the Lakers have interest in trading for Wendell Carter Jr., current center for the Orlando Magic. And if you have been keeping up with what I want for them at center, it would heavily resemble the player that Wendell Carter happens to be, with that being a good, switchable defender, an above average rebounder at the very least, and then a fairly reliable 3 point shooter. As you cannot hope to pair Anthony Davis with another big without them being a reliable floor spacer, which Wendell Carter can be. Believe it or not, he shot 37.4% from 3 and over 3 attempts per game last season, one of the best in the entire league among big men. And yes, I do think that would be enough to pair him with AD on offense. And not only that, but I think he would be versatile enough to pair them on defense too. We already know that Anthony Davis can defend the perimeter, but you ideally want to have another big with him that can as well. That way neither of them can be targeted through a high pick and roll. And that would not be the case with Wendell Carter, as he is not fully reliant on playing drop coverage. And that to me would be the ideal kind of big for them to trade for. A guy that can actually work with Anthony Davis not only offense or defense, but both. And that is very rare among big men. The only bad thing about it would be with LeBron having to defend wing players again. Though I do think it could work by adding another good wing defender to their lineup with him, along with having Anthony Davis and Wendell Carter Jr. behind him, both of which are good switchable defenders again. In my opinion, the only real negative about trading for Wendell Carter is the fact that he tends to be a bit injury prone, as up until this point, he has only appeared in over 55 games one time in a single year, and we are talking about a guy entering his 7th year in the NBA. Yeah, pretty big risk. And simply put, you are taking a risk with him being able to stay healthy. And that can be an even bigger risk when pairing him with LeBron and Anthony Davis, both of which have dealt with their own fair share of injuries, meaning they cannot afford to give up too much here for him. But then when you remember that the Orlando Magic are one of the very few teams that had, and maybe still do have interest in D'Angelo Russell, then they could both have something each other want. The Magic currently don't have a reliable true point guard on their team, and the Lakers don't have a reliable big on their team apart from Anthony Davis, really making it a mutual thing. And not only that, but another thing to factor in here is the cap relief the Lakers need too. They are currently pushing the second tax apron, and if they hope to get further under it, which they would need to do if they hope to sign a guy like Gary Trent, then they will need to dump some money off their payroll. And if they would trade D'Lo for Wendell Carter, then they would free up about $7 million off their payroll, and that would be enough to use their mini mid-level exception, and that right there would be enough for me to pull the trigger. Now I'm not sure if Orlando would, but I definitely would offer them a trade centered around D'Angelo Russell and hopefully they will be willing to take it. But with all of that being said, what do you guys think? How do you feel about the Lakers summer league pickups, along with their reported interest in trading for Wendell Carter Jr? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and hit that notification bell to never miss out when I upload a video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.